I made a ship I wound up hating called the Wall Skimmer. It seemed like a good idea, and in the right situation, it worked fine. But there were aspects of this space station build where it was not the right situation. And it allowed me to discover an important difference and difficulty between welding a framework laid by hand and with a projected image. I can't believe it took me this long to realize it, but I built a solution. So let me start by explaining the problem around this whole thing. But even aside from the problem, I had another revelation about the game that I intuitively knew, but it wasn't until I actually built a new type of welder that I really saw how much I was missing out on. The problem I had was this. Everything in the game is a voxel, a square block as it were. And even though some items are very thin, like a window or a light panel, there are aspects of the game that still treat them like a square. Now, it's a little odd because even for collision purposes, when you or another object are moving around, you can pass through the rest of the voxel's unoccupied space, even when the actual block is just a small sliver. But the true square nature of a block comes out when you're welding. And furthermore, the game also treats a hand place block in the voxel space it occupies differently than a blueprinted projected image of that same block. When you hand place a block, you can just go right up next to it and weld it, even if you are technically standing or occupying a little part of that voxel square. It's kind of like that idea I just mentioned about the game, ignoring any collision regarding unused areas of a voxel square. This is not true in a projected image. And it's the same thing you can sometimes experience when you try to place down a block that's particularly large, and your body is technically inside of that squared off voxel area. In a projected image, it seems the game doesn't quite know enough about the block yet to allow that kind of intrusion into the unused part of the voxel square. So, if you are inside of that square in some way, the game says, I can't weld up that block because something is interfering and blocking the space. And in a way, this makes sense. And it's likely the easiest and most consistent way for the game to avoid calamities or other issues by allowing a block to be welded up when some other object is occupying the same space that would be an invitation for an explosion. I imagine it's much easier on game logic and even performance to treat every block that's potentially in an image as a square and just avoid all problems rather than trying to analyze each block's shape on the fly. The wall skimmer drone was a big fail because of this for two reasons. One was the skirting and skimmers I had around the drone along with the welders that were rather recessed into the body of the drone. Those extra skirting and skimmer parts were intersecting with those empty parts of the projected voxels and preventing me from being able to get close enough to the projection for welding. I could weld them, but I had to back away from the image and try to get into this perfect distance that was still close enough for the welder to reach the part of the image that it needed to weld, yet far enough away as to not intersect into the empty part of the voxel, which led to the second part of the build's failing. It was small grid, and the small grid welders don't have the same reach as large grid welders. So I fixed all that and built a new welding ship. This new ship was a large grid welder. In fact, it was the first large grid welding ship I'd built. I mean, I've built other large grid welders, but they've been more along the lines of stationary 3D printers for ships. I've never built a large grid welding ship before. The revelation after building this ship though was tremendous. And it was that same, oh wow, moment I had when I built my first large grid rover after my first couple small grid ones. 
this new welder worked exactly like I wanted and is truly an industrial build. Let me break it down and show you. It's a hydrogen powered build. It needs to load components when docked. So it started with a connector to a series of three small cargo containers to feed three small hydrogen tanks. From here, I added more small containers to also serve as conveyor tubes for the hydrogen thrusters and largely mirrored the use of the engines I had on the large grid miner. Two for forward thrust, two for backward thrust, two up and two more down, and two for each on side to side movement. In its skeletal frame, it's only three by three large grid blocks wide and tall and made a nice setup for four large grid welders. Fast welding with good reach at each corner. I did a couple conveyor tubes because after the main configuration of the cargo containers, I wound up with 12 small containers, exactly one third the capacity of the large grid miner. And I liked that, a very proportional little brother to the miner. It even had one third the hydrogen capacity. The welder also got the primary functional bits like a cockpit, gyroscope, battery, a remote control block, just in case I needed to control it remotely rather than pilot it, and an antenna to allow it to communicate with other parts of the station, control remotely, and well, it's just a necessary piece of equipment. Like some of you might have found, the large grid antennas are large, too large. Look at the size of that thing. So I've taken to using a rotor, placing a small head on the rotor and using the small grid antenna. I also liked being able to give the antenna a slow spin for looks. This build though needed a little pizzazz. So I decided to continue modeling it a little after its big brother miner and gave it some siding armor and a mixture of plating on the top and bottom. Even though I used half-sized blocks, the side armor did add a full block to the width, making it four blocks wide. But it really added a lot to the build and helped it mirror its large big brother. That plating should also help give it a little protection when I'm banging it around welding. The finished product was pretty compact for a large grid hydrogen ship, had a lot of carrying capacity and a proper amount of thrust to move it around effectively, even when fully loaded. The best part though, was that between the added reach of the welders and not having any bits of the actual welding ship in the way, it was able to easily weld up the angular, more difficult parts of the projection that the small grid wall skimmer really struggled with because of those empty voxel spaces that the projection was creating. I can't believe it took me this long in the game to try out a large grid welding ship. And now that I've built this one, I may not go back. Though for maneuverability while still holding a respectable amount of components, the small grid welding drone looks really cool and will always be a keeper. Now, as far as using this ship planet side in full gravity, you could still use it, but even with those nice high output hydrogen thrusters, you'd only be able to fill one or two of the cargo containers rather than all 12. So you'd want to add more power. And unlike my tiny control ship build, this one isn't really easily swappable with atmospheric thrusters because they're completely different sizes. Use electricity versus hydrogen. Only put out half the power of the hydrogen thrusters. So yeah, a redesign would be needed. But it has performed remarkably well on the space station. Did exactly what I needed it to and really sped up this whole build quite a lot. The question is though, will I be able to squeeze it into the interior of the engineering deck to weld up a bunch of gyroscopes and other blocks. Tune in next time to see if we make it. But till then, take care and I'll be talking to you later.